God, that you'd change us some way, shape, or form. Some area of our life that we may be struggling in, some area of our life, God, that you just need to bless us in. Father, I pray, God, that you do that. The only way, God, that you can do it is uh, for us to yield to you and you do a supernatural thing in our life. Father, I pray you bless the preaching hour of the songs of Zion. God, Lord, please let us leave differently than the way we came. And Lord Jesus, we'll do nothing but bow and wear the head and give you the praise and the glory and the honor for all that you've done for us. In Christ's name, we pray. God's people say it. Amen. 
Thanks, somebody, please. Oh, yeah. There is power. Uh, by the end of the year. I believe God can do that. 
Amen. I believe he can. I believe he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. All right. Uh, Matthew chapter 4. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll read that text in just a second. I'll, I'll share with you uh, a few things and uh, we'll read the text there. Um, there's a place near the equator uh, and it is called the Intertropical Convergent Zone. The Intertropical Convergent Zone. That's in the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean as well, north and south of the equator. Uh, but what that is and what happens there is uh, it's called, anybody ever heard this term before, the doldrums? Anybody ever said, I've got the doldrums? You ever heard that uh, said before? Sometimes we find ourselves in a place and in a time uh, where we have the doldrums. We just feel like nothing's moving, nothing's going forward, nothing's happening. Uh, we find ourselves spiritually in a place of doldrums. Um, when I think about that and uh, what would happen uh, or what does happen uh, there if, uh, if a ship is sailing using a, an old-fashioned sail, uh, the pressure, the way it is, there's not uh, any wind force to push the sail, to push the boat. And in fact, many, many ships have got been stranded there for days and weeks uh, in the place of doldrums. There's nothing to fill their sails and move them forward. Y'all know where I'm going with this. I'm thankful for the wind of the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful for the wind of God that fills our sails from time to time. I'll say this, and I'll just be honest. There's times that I find myself, and I would, I would say that you probably find yourself in a place of doldrums. You're not doing anything. You're just existing. You're just getting by. You're just there. But I believe that God has much more for us. I believe that God wants to do much more for us. We might call it a rut. We might call it a routine, the ordinary life, the grind of life. Uh, we find ourselves in a place of inactivity. Um, Wednesday night, uh, my, my daughter came to me. Uh, and they were practicing a little bit and all that. We were here for just a little while or a uh, good while after church. We're practicing all and And she came up to me. I'm talking about with tears in her eyes, Charles. She had tears in her eyes and she said, Daddy, I'm bored. I'm bored. And, uh, one thing that I learned, uh, I didn't want to tell my mom and dad I was bored because they'd find me something to do real quick at the house. Somebody say amen right there. And uh, I couldn't make her go clean everything around the church, so I, I just let her get by with it. All right, she looked at me with her little finger. Y'all don't look at me like I'm a potato bear pushover. Uh, stagnant is another thing. When you drink from a stream, you want to drink from flowing water. You don't want to drink that stagnant water because that brings death. And I believe that you and I, God, the Bible said that out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Uh, but I'm afraid too many times uh, we find ourselves in a place uh, to where I, we've become stagnant in our life. And we may even ask this question, where is my life going? What is going on in my life? Now, many of us have followed the Lord for a long time. Some of us have just been saved uh, for a while, but many of us have been saved for many years. I got saved in 1989, and uh, I know it's hard to look at me and believe that I'm even that old, uh, but, I, but I promise you, I'm telling you, telling you the truth. Uh, let me just, this is a pause. I don't even know why I want to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you commercial right here. Uh, whoever uh, helped me, Today, and with that offering, I, didn't, I put it to good use. I put some chickens in the ministry, and I put <laughs> fish in the ministry, and tater tots in the ministry, and I feel real good about it. Amen. <laughs> uh, back, to, back to my uh, message here. <laughs> the, our life 
as a Christian, I believe our life. Jesus said this, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I believe that Jesus wants us to have a life that is abundant. I believe Jesus wants to have a life that is overflowing. I believe Jesus wants to give us the good things of God and the wonderful things. And, and we sit around sometimes and we get up this idea, Brother Ronnie, that I'm just not going anywhere. I'm just stuck in the doldrums. Well, I've done a little bit of research, Brother Ben, and I found out that we are never not going anywhere. In fact, right now, you're moving a really fast pace going a really long way. Uh, on average, the earth is 92 million miles away from the sun. The earth's orbit to make one complete pass around the sun, one complete turn trip around the sun. And of course, we all know that takes 365 days. Uh, that orbit puts us going 584 million miles all the while going 67,000 miles per hour. So I don't be real still. Do you feel anything moving? No. But we are hurtling through space at 67,000 miles an hour, 584 million miles around uh, this fiery ball I uh, called the sun, and you thought you weren't doing anything. You thought you weren't going anywhere. Uh, we are, every one of us, uh, until Jesus comes back, uh, every one of us will take a trip uh, around the sun this year. In fact, you'll do that every year of your life uh, until Jesus comes back to call us home. Uh, and, and I got to thinking about that. I, I was reading a book, one of my favorite authors uh, is Mark Batterson, and he, he wrote a book, and I, I'm going to develop a few messages out of that book. And, and I got to thinking, they called it this, uh, a trip around the sun. A trip around the sun. And I got to thinking about how that uh, we look at time and we look at, we count years and we count weeks and days. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. But I believe if you and I would maybe adjust our thinking just a little bit uh, and look at it in the idea uh, that it, on this trip around the sun and on that trip, on my seventh trip uh, around the sun, I got a scar on my life when I lost my mom on dust. Uh, that was the first time death ever hit me. 1982, my uh, grandmother died. I, I had uh, a grandmother on both sides and uh, loved them both, but I, uh, because she took care of us and kept us and all that stuff, um, I got closer to my mom old Oster. One thing I learned about my mom old Oster, if you've ever met uh, uh, Regina and Leah's mother, uh, Nanny, she reminds me much of my mom old Oster. I guess that's why I love her so much. Uh, but uh, one thing I learned, Miss Carolyn, is whenever Bob Barker and The Price is Right came on, you better be quiet at Mama Doster's house. Mama Doster had this great big old chair that she had set, a big armchair that she had set in, fluffy armchair. Uh, but it didn't matter where you were, it felt like in the house. If you got to acting up and making noise while Bob Barker at the Price is Right was on, she had a hickory. And it wasn't just a hickory. She had hickories taped together. And it was uh, it was about a mile long. And it didn't matter where you were. She would take that thing and whip that thing. And it'd catch the back of your legs. Uh, and you'd learn to be quiet real quick at Mama Doster's house. So when my Mama Doster died, I, I can still remember my mom and dad setting my brother and I down in the living room uh, on the little love seat there and telling us how that she had passed. And that was my first uh, taste with death on the seventh trip around the sun. On my 11th trip around the sun, or somewhere thereabouts, I got this scar right here on my pinky. You can't see that very much, but I still remember that. We had a mini bike. John, uh, John we had a little mini bike, and me and my brother had to share the mini bike. Well, how many of you know when you got some sort of fun thing like that and only got one, it's not, not fun to watch your brother do it when you could be doing it. And so I decided I'm going to have a good time on this mini bike. It was his turn, and I knew that. 
And, and he wanted to get on. And, and about that time that he come up to me, I gave it all the gas it had. I mean, it didn't pop a wheel or anything like that here. But it just went me. And when I started, he's chasing me through the yard. Chasing me right beside my mom and dad's yard. We on the field there. And chasing me through the field. And I'm going as fast as I can. Looking back, laughing at my brother. And all of a sudden, I hit a fence. And not only did I hit a fence, there was a bird uh, house and a pole right there. I hit the pole, I hit the fence, knocked it all down. I, when I stood up, I had meat hanging out of my, uh, my pinky, and I still remember that was on my 11th trip around the sun. I, I'll just be honest with you. I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a miracle of God, some of the things we did, uh, that I ever made it to this trip around the sun, because there's a bunch of trips uh, that it, things didn't. Uh, we, we got into all sorts of trouble and all sorts of things. But can I tell you about the next trip that I, I, I desperately remember on my 14th trip around the sun? I got born again. Yes. I got saved by the grace of God. I wasn't raised in church. I wasn't raised around the things of God. I, I, but I, I, God got to working on my, me and my heart. I, and God got to working on me. I, and God got to doing things in my heart. I, and I accepted Jesus Christ I, as my Savior. And He began to work that night. I, ran, and I can still remember it. I can just about smell the air. I, and I can just see the... I, as it was just getting dusk and it was getting darker as we got home. Uh, you've heard my testimony many times, uh, uh, but I got saved in the back seat of 1987 Mazda 323 on the way home down at the Turner's uh, Cruisers turn around. God reached down and turned my life around. Somebody say amen right there. Uh, but on my way, I uh, got home and I remember getting out of the car and my uncle, uh, came, my uncle's a lot like me. Uh, he, he's he built kind of low to the ground, a little bit wide and uh, uh, he kind of hugged me up uh, uh, real good. And man, I, I still remember what joy I felt knowing that Jesus Christ had washed my sins away. Amen. The next trip around the sun brought something that every one of us probably have experienced. My first puppy love heartbreak. Oh, I didn't think I would live through it. I didn't think I would make it. I didn't think I would ever be able to go on again. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to do anything. I was just, y'all don't look at me like that. You might say it's just puppy love, but it was love to the puppy back then. Right. <laughs> on my 23rd trip around the sun, I answered the call to preach. Oh, I can take you over the spot right now. And I can show you just exactly where I knelt down. And that's Jesus Christ that changed my life. That was a great year because later on in that trip around the sun, Brother Ben, I met Kelly. Uh, and as you know, uh, she soon became my bride and we all lived happily forever after. On the 26th trip around the sun, I married Kelly. We bought our first home. Then the next year, the 27th trip around the sun, I went through one of the hardest times in my life up to that point. I, I had close relations with people that I felt had came to come against me and there was turmoil and I had to actually, this is my home church in case you don't know that. I, I came here in 1996 and uh, then on this trip, the 27th trip in my life around the sun is when I, I had to leave and I was just trying to do my best to do God's will in my life. Can I tell you this? There won't always be, be people that understand everything about what God's doing in your life. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll go further and say don't hold it always, don't always hold it against them. It's not always for them to know what God's doing in your life. I, I like what uh, Miss Nidge testified this morning. Uh, don't allow hurt in your life and disagreement and all those th kinds of things in your life to mess up your relationship with God. You know, I could have gotten bitter, Brother Ronnie. I could have said, you know what, if this is what serving God's about, this is what trying to please God's about, I'm just done with it. I'm not even going to do it anymore. But 
God helped me. God touched me. And man, I, I look back on that trip now. And man, the Lord was so sweet during those times. The Lord was so precious during those times. The next trip around the sun, I, I sold everything that I had. I left into everything that I had and moved off to Bible college. And God was doing a work in my life. The next trip around the sun, uh, I, I was a great uh, student so because the very next year I was back pastor. No, I'm just saying. Uh, we, we came here it was on that next trip around the sun, 29th uh, year of my life. Uh, the church had gone through difficulties and they called and said, would you just come and help? And I was ever so glad to do so and I would bring people uh, from the Bible college. I don't know if you ever were able to come up. Or did you come up here during while I was in college? Uh, but I'd bring different people. And at first, I, I, was, I was trying to find y'all a pastor. And I'd bring every, anybody that acted like, acted like they wanted the pastor. I said, you need to go up here and uh, go, come, down, come to my church and uh, you can preach and uh, you can talk to, the, talk to some of the church folk. And uh, all the while, I didn't know what God was doing. But God knew exactly what he was doing. You know, can I say this? God knows what he's doing in your life. He knows exactly what he's doing. You say, preacher, I don't understand why this happened. I don't understand why that happened. And I thought this would work out. I thought this would go a different way. God is working in your life right now. God is moving in your life right now. I'll, I'll hurry, but I want to share uh, one thing with you down in here just a second. 32nd trip around my life around the sun, rather, in my life. That brought our first child, graduated Bible college, and stepped out on faith full-time into the ministry. That was 2007. Man, there's been a lot of times that I've worried. There's been a lot of times that I've wondered. There's been a lot of times that I didn't understand. But Brother Robert, God has been faithful. God has shown himself faithful time and time again. I was talking to my mother here the other day. Uh, one of my cousin's children uh, had uh, lost a baby early, early in the pregnancy. And I, I told my mother, I said, if you remember, Kelly uh, had gone through some of the same thing. Uh, Clara Grace is our oldest child, but she is what they, uh, she had what they call a vanishing twin. Uh, she, there was a twin in the womb, uh, but lost it very early on. And, uh, and then of course, you, you know, some of the stories there, there was a lot of questions about our children and, uh, all that went on through there, but God's been faithful. Brother, brother Ben, aren't you thankful that God can reach down and touch a child in NICU and touch a child that's born way too early? But God can sustain. God not only has sustained, uh, he blesses and he provides and he flourishes. If you see little Jackson, man, uh, you would never believe he was a NICU baby that said that was what? How, how, how early was he? Do you remember that? How early? Ten weeks early. But look at, look at it now. He, he's just a, a picture of health and energetic and all that. God is faithful. The 30 eighth trip around the sun was in 2013. I remember it was getting close. It was the fall coming close to Christmas. And we were struggling that year financially here at the church. And I I began looking for a job. And I, I, my, my heart was I'm not going to cause them to not to be able to, to do things that we need to do. I'll just go to work until we can do better. And uh, someone spoke into my life and said, you need just to trust God. And I did. And Brother Haley, can I tell you this? God came through. Not only did he come through, he has continued to come through time and time and time again, if he's ever came through for you, somebody ought to give him some praise. Yeah. Yeah. On my 42nd trip around the sun, I got another scar on my life. Today would 
have been my father's 65th birthday. As you know, he passed in March of 2007, or 17, I mean. And uh, I'll never forget the happenings and the going ons of all that went through, I went through there. Let me, I'll just pause right here. Most of you in this room that were around back then helped me tremendously. You helped my family. You helped us through it. And uh, I want to I say this. This guy right here was working for a church, I believe, at that time. And showed up on that Sunday. I came into my office and there he was. And uh, he said, Brother, I just couldn't let you go through today and not be here for you. And I appreciate that. Uh, from you. I appreciate the many things many of you I did in my life. That was a very tough year. It was a tough year here at the church. But God was working. That was the first year we went to the Rise Youth Camp and we had several, many teenagers that got saved that summer. Then later on, my mother got saved that year. Amen. <laughs> Amen. My, my mom, I, I'm still here walking. Walking down that aisle and meeting me right down here. Bow her head and ask to Jesus Christ in her heart. I say bless his name. I, I, I'm not just in the doldrums. I, I'm not just going through. I, I'm not just getting by. I'm here to tell you my God is a God that does deliver. My God is a God that's taken me on the journey of a lifetime. There's been up days. There's been down days. But I'll tell you, my God has been faithful. My God has shown himself real in my life. Yeah. Now, this hit me when I was putting this together. Because I was thinking I'm 44 years old, but this is my 45th trip around the sun. Man, I, I felt like going out and buying a sports car and, you know, I feel like a midlife crisis is about to hit me. There, <laughs> we can look ahead, most of us. And I'll just be personal and be honest with you. In our family, there's some storm clouds that I know we're going to have to go through this year. There's some uncertainty of things that we're going to have to go through. Oh, I believe with all my heart, Miss Mary, there'll be better days. There'll be wonderful days. But I, and I also know that as dark as the night gets, the sun will shine. The sun will come through. I say hallelujah, bless his name. I, well, hey, let, me, let me share this with you, and I, I'll give you the, uh, the text and uh, give you a few thoughts there. This year, as you know, uh, we've got planned to go on a mission trip to uh, Arizona. Um, that's a very expensive endeavor. It'll take a lot of faith and a lot of work to make that happen. And uh, as we knew we were going to do that last year, uh, we wanted to do a mission trip. And uh, so we had pretty much made up our mind, we'll just do that. We won't do anything else as far as trying to take the teens to the youth camp and all that. And uh, I, uh, someone spoke into my life again. Why can't God do both? Oh, me of little faith. Why can't God do both? And I got to thinking about that, Hannah. Why can't God do both? And so we just took a step of faith and said, we're going to do both by the grace of God. And I'm looking forward to this year being a wonderful year. I'm looking forward to life transformation. I'm looking forward to what God's going to do uh, in the days ahead and in the years ahead. I talked about this a little bit this morning. I'm looking forward to the end of this year. I'm looking forward uh, to us marching into the uh, to the banker's office there, giving them the last check, and them uh, giving us a big old uh, memo stamped P. 
paid in full. Uh, you gonna tell me that my God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, uh, Mace Jackson said, and the taters in the hills. You gonna tell me that my God owns it all and he can't do it? Uh, I believe my God can do it. Uh, I believe my God is well able uh, to do exceeding uh, and abundantly the whole of the right. and, and it's not just so we can boast and say, well, we'll pay no. no. There's much more ministry to be done than not me, Maranatha Bank. This is a church of the living God. And when God gives it to us, He's going to give it through us. And we're going to reach people for the cause of Christ. We're going to reach people for the gospel. Amen. I'm not looking to uh, just sit on my laurels and say, well, we, we paid it off, didn't we? We got it taken care of and act like that we've arrived. There's much more ministry to do. And the Lord will tell you it's coming. For years ahead, this will be a place that we can minister to our community, minister to missionaries around the world. I talked a little bit about some of the things that happened on that 27th trip in my life. It was a tough year. But looking back on it, God showed himself faithful. God was close to me. God helped me. God did more for me than men could ever do. And I, I, I would dare say that uh, two years ago now, I believe it was, Mr. Mitch, uh, when Lynn, that was a terrible time. But looking back on it, God was so sweet and he was so faithful. I still remember we had already planned the trip to go to a prayer meeting at the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Billy and I just had to get away and, uh, and it, it, was, it was just what we needed. But because we'd already booked everything, uh, there was a couple of days there I couldn't be here and I told Miss Mitch, she said, don't you worry about it. It'll be all right. And uh, I remember being at the hotel in the bedroom, or the at, the at the bed there. And I called her because that was the day they were supposed to make the decision. They were gonna take him off of life support. And they expected him, the doctors expected him, that he wouldn't make it. And God, even without the preacher being there, God spoke to that lady right there. Yeah. And told her, no, everything's going to be all right. And you all know what happened, Brother Ben? Everything is all right. Yeah. He's doing just fine. Some of the deepest, darkest valleys we go through, some of the hardest things we go through, uh, uh, those are the trips we yeah. remember. Uh, those are the times uh, we remember. Those are the things uh, that make our life. <laughs> Aren't you thankful that God's taking us on this trip around the sun. Aren't you thankful that we, we can go with him? We can go along with him. The, uh, I'll tell you a story about a lady. This lady's name is Ellen. Ellen Blackwell was her name. She ministered for years as a missionary uh, through the Assembly of God at 92 years old. Listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. At 92 years old, she felt the call of God on her life to go to the Sea of Galilee. Now, she lives here in America from the West Virginia area. Went to the Sea of Galilee and set up a retreat center, a Bible teaching ministry there. And uh, she, uh, uh, over the next 12 years of her life, uh, she went over a hundred times to the land of Israel. Now, how many of you feel like if you were just to decide next week I'm going to Israel, that'd be a lot of work involved in doing it. Not just packing, but I'm talking about the, I don't even know how many hours you, you make the trip. That was probably a very tiring trip. At 92 years old, she felt like God was calling her. Uh, God was uh, working in her life. Not only that, she was in a wheelchair. And she got an 80-year-old sister that travels with her because she needs somebody to help her. 
somebody talked to her and asked her at uh, 90 years old, said, what's your 10-year plan? And you won't believe this? She had one. She had one. Now, I, I'm not at 90 years old, but I suspect if I make it to 90 years old, I'm not going to have a 10-year plan. I might have a 10-day plan, more like a 10-hour plan, just trying to make it through. Because I know if I make it that far, I made it by grace. Amen. <laughs> she went on to make 92 trips uh, around uh, back over to Israel there. And at the time of her passing, she was the lo longest or the oldest living female missionary in that denomination. What I'm telling you is, just because you've had a few trips behind you, don't mean that God's done with you. Don't mean that God's over. What if, at 90 years old, God said, now it's time. I've got a ministry for you. I was talking to Brother Charles, and I don't know how old he was when he finally got to do that. He worked with a ministry called Christ for the Nations. Is that right? He worked with them for how many years? For two years. He, I, I, if I'm not, he worked here uh, at Freight Liner. And he'd done some other jobs and all that. And finally, he was able, uh, by faith, to move down to Texas, I believe it was, and work in that ministry. Uh, sometimes we think, well, I missed, my, I missed the boat when I do, didn't do it in the 20s. I missed the, the opportunity when I didn't do it in the 30s. If God's speaking to you, if God's telling you, just go ahead and sign up. Just go ahead and hook up. The next trip around the sun might be the greatest trip in your life. It might be the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to you. Because my God is not the God of yesterday. My God is the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. My God's already got it all figured out. He knows what he's going to do in your life. <laughs> Here, I'll give you some scripture and give you this thought. Matthew 4 says this. I'm almost done, don't worry. Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two uh, brethren. Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. They straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets and called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in a uh, in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. They brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those which had the palsy and he healed them. Of course, here we read the story about how that Jesus called some of his first disciples, some of his first followers. And in verse number 18, we find that he finds Peter and Andrew, his brother, and they're fishing. And Jesus said, uh, if you'll follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And we find out that they, they did just exactly that. They left their net. They left their calling. They left their income. They left the family business. They left it all behind. The Bible said immediately, and they went and followed Jesus. I'd love to tell you that the very first time God said, you need to do this, I've always raised my hand and said, yeah, Lord, I'll go here, my Lord, send me. But I'm hard-headed. I'm stubborn. I don't have a faith sometimes that's that so good and sometimes God has to come back over and over again but immediately they said I'm going to follow you wouldn't it be good if we did had immediately kind of faith in our life wouldn't it be good if you told your kids to do something immediately they did it go clean your room immediately they run and did it go do this immediately they run and did it you call up to the store and say I got a problem going on with my car I got a problem going on with this piece of 
of machinery, this piece of equipment that I got from you, get over here immediately and we'll take care of it. Man, that'd be real good. Uh, but we don't live in that kind of society most of the time. Uh, and I'm afraid uh, uh, that we've just made up in our mind. Uh, there's going to be another day. There's going to be another time. Uh, I've got more time. I'll think about it a little while. I'll pray it about a little while. And I'll find out what God wants me to do. Would to God we immediately follow him. Here's, a, here's my thought that I want to share. The one you follow is more important than what follows. The one you follow is more important than what follows. Look at verse number 19. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their necks and followed him. The one you follow is more important than what follows. Now, we know that Peter was married. We know that he had a wife because he had a mother-in-law. And uh, he, didn't, he didn't even talk it over with his wife. He said, God's calling me. And I'm going to go. I'm not telling you to be crazy or anything like that. But sometimes God wants us to take audacious steps of faith. Sometimes God wants us to step out on faith in amazing ways. And so I got to thinking about that. Peter left everything, all these guys that leave everything. They didn't know what was lying ahead. In fact, Jesus said it later in ministry, he said, uh, the birds have nests, all this. He said, the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. For three years, they didn't have much as far as this world goes. But oh, the things they saw, the things they did. Now, talking about Peter, we know, as you've read, most of you have read, and probably are very familiar with many of the stories in the New Testament. Just immediately after this, they start healing the lame and healing the sick. And, uh, God, Jesus is doing wonderful things, and God's working in miraculous ways. Had they kept on casting that net, they would have never experienced that rain. They would have never known what that was like. But because they said, I'm going all the way with you, and God did amazing things in their life. And this is the thing I thought of. Maybe you can sit if you have one too. Peter, we, we all know Peter had a difficult time at times, difficult season. There were things, times he just said, the first thing that came up, that came out. But Peter was the one that when Jesus came walking on the water, he said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come on the water too. And Peter, even he might have sunk, but he who holds the world's record, he's walked the furthest on water than any one of us ever had. And by the way, before he could get down, Jesus picked him up. What if this year. I'm all for a five-year plan. I'm all for a 10-year plan. All those kinds of things. You've got goals. You've got dreams. And those are wonderful. But what if we just looked at it and said, on this trip around the sun, before next year, God, I'm going to immediately, straightway, follow you. I'm going to step out in faith. And God, I'm going to believe you to do impossible things, improbable things, amazing things. I want you to stand with me here tonight. I, I believe that's all that I need to share right now. I wonder how many of us this year or right now tonight will slip out of our seat Maybe we'll come and thank God for 
some of those previous trips around the year, around the globe, rather, around the sun. They always come and say, thank you, God, that five years ago, 20 years ago, you did this for me. You came through like I didn't ever believe you would. Come on. Come on. How many of us slip around these old altars and say, God, I want to tell you thank you. Lord, I want to tell you bless you. Lord, I want to tell you I love you. Thank you, God, for what you've done in my life. Lord, I'm still hurting. I'm still scarred from that trip. God, I need some help going through that, dealing with that. Oh, God, will you help me? God, I know that in a place called Mara, they cut down a tree. Bitter waters were made sweet. Lord, I believe that God you can do that for me. I believe that God, you can show me kindness and mercy and grace just like that. Now, Lord, help me, God, to follow you. Help me, God, to go on for you and with you. Oh, Lord. I love you tonight. The thieves are praying. You're here tonight and say, Preacher, be honest with you. Some of these trips ain't, ain't been going too good. I sure need the Lord's help even right now. With heads bowed and eyes closed, why don't you just slip your hand up? Oh, I sure need God's help on this trip. I'm going through some stuff that's way too hard for me. Here's my hand. Thank you. We see those. Somebody else. Preacher, would you help me pray? I need the help of God. I need the grace of God to make it this trip. I need God to do something real for me. I need God to do something miraculous for me. Oh, God. In Jesus' name. Help us, Lord. Speak to us. Thank you, God, for your word. We love you. We bless you. The Lord, have your will and have your way in hearts and lives. Thank you for an opportunity to come here tonight. Try to share your word, be a help, encouragement, blessing. Lord, I hope I did that. Lord, more than more than that, I, God, my prayer is that I said everything you wanted me to say. God, I want to be your messenger. I want to be faithful to your message. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for manifold, manifold mercies and grace that have come on my life. I don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But God, you sure are faithful. You sure are good. Now help us. We'll thank you and bless you. We ask in Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. Wonderful. Thank you for coming. Let me say this. Uh, thank you all that came out for uh, choir practice. And uh, it looked good up there uh, in, in choir practice. Thank you for your faithfulness and your extra time. We appreciate that. We're looking forward to uh, helping the days ahead. Brother Ben is uh, volunteering for those of you who weren't in choir practice. He's volunteering for the next several months, uh, probably at least through Easter, uh, with uh, his work. He uh, has to be down here a good bit, and uh, he's volunteering to help us, and uh, we appreciate that. And uh, uh, I'll just go ahead, if there's any rumors about it, I'll go ahead and stop it right now. We're not kicking Brother Robert out. Uh, we're not paying Brother Ben uh, big checks or anything like that. He's just doing it because he wants to do something for the glory of God. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. And so uh, we appreciate it. I appreciate your heart for ministry, brother. And uh, there's some trips that you, you've made around the sun that probably you, there have been times, in fact, I know there were because me and you talked. 
There are times that you wanted to just say it ain't worth it. But God's been faithful. And uh, just say something and pray for me. Nothing really personal that, I, uh, that God laid in my heart, but God showed me something while he was preaching. He said in 2013, the church went through one of the hardest times that it's gone through uh, financially. And God's number in the Bible.